Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to St. Timothy Missionary Baptist Church. I am Deacon Pernell Jones, Jr., and our pastor is the Reverend Dr. Elmore Torbert, Jr. Praise God. Well, saints, as always, this is our Sunday school time, and we study out of our Bible expository and illuminated book three months at a time. And our lesson today is entitled Healing on the Sabbath. All right, Healing on the Sabbath on the sabbath all right well this whole quarter we have been dealing with the overarching theme that jesus is god last month we looked at uh, at his power over death because he is god he has power over death and this month and and in today's lesson we know he is the son of god because of the miracles that he performs and again we will see one of those miracles in today's lesson all right all right well if you'd like to read along uh, feel free to turn to the Gospel of Luke, the sixth chapter. Gospel of Luke, the sixth chapter. And we're going to read the first 11 verses, 1 through 11. Well, while you're turning or while we, uh, as we prepare ourselves for the lesson, let's, let's have a word of prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for being an awesome God, an omniscient, all-knowing, ever-present an ever-loving God, Father. We magnify your name, we lift your name, and we give you all the honor and the praise that you so richly deserve, Father. We set you apart from all things, from Father. We place you above all things, and your name is over all things, Lord. And as we desire to serve you, Father, to grow in your word, Father, to look a little more like your son each and every day, Father, to submit to your Holy Spirit, to allow, to allow him to have his way in our life, Father. Lord, we just ask that you open your word to us, that we might be transformed, that we might be cleansed, that we might be made whole, Father, by the reading and, and the nourishing of, of your word, Father. So, Lord, we just thank you. We ask that you give us a good time in your word today, Father. And all these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, saints. Well, hey, let, let's get right to it. Again, the lesson title is Healing on the Sabbath, and, and we're going to start reading. Our first verse says, And it came to pass on the second Sabbath, after the first, that he went through the cornfields, and his disciples plucked the ears of corn and did eat, rubbing them in their hands. All right. Okay, well, well, let's start with the Sabbath. All right, what is the Sabbath? We know the Ten Commandments says, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. And, and remember that, he, uh, that, that God created all things in six days, and he rested on that Sabbath day, again, to keep it holy. And that lets us know that we are to, to um, have a day of rest. Oh, the Lord has made us to work oh, from the garden. As Adam and Eve were put out of the garden, um, Adam would work from the sweat of his brow, and, and Paul said, if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. So we, we can work almost seven days a week if we had to, if we were forced to. And God says, you need to rest one day. There, there's a time when you need physical and emotional and, and, and spiritual rest. You need all manner of rest. And we are to take that time once a week to rest. But not only are we resting, we are remembering our God on that day we are worshiping him on that day remembering our heavenly father this is an inward thing it is it is a heartfelt desire and that we should have an intent to rest our bodies rest ourselves and take that time to remember our creator all right the father the son and the holy spirit to remember god on that day and during that time of rest Right. Well, knowing what the Ten Commandments says, okay, uh, we, that that is what we are called to do. Right now, in our lesson, we are going to look at Pharisees, look at our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and 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 Jesus' disciples. And who were these Pharisees? The Pharisees were religious leaders, middle class men. Uh, they were not the overall leaders of the church. Those were the Sadducees, and they were led by the chief of. Uh, by the chief priest, but they were a part of that uh, religious group, and, and they were separate from the Sadducees, 
in that uh, the Pharisees were the ones who, before Christ died on the cross and rose again, who needled and picked at Jesus the most. All right. After the resurrection, we'll see the Sadducees a little more. But at this time, the Pharisees and there were scribes and others <coughs> who would follow and chase after Jesus to try to trip Jesus up in his words and actions and try to catch him breaking the law in some way, form or fashion. Right. Well, these Pharisees, they were quick to claim that they were descendants of Abraham. They were biological descendants. But somewhere along the line, they became children of their father, the devil. All right. They, they, they were the representatives of God on earth as they, they led uh, in, the, in the temple and were part of the temple religious life of the people and were respected by the people and considered an authority of God's word. But they had gone astray in some form or fashion, biological descendants of Abraham, but spiritually they, had, they did not know Jesus and, and by extension did not know the father and were of their father, the devil. So anything Jesus had to say would make you and me happy as believers, but it just made the Pharisees mad and angry with every word and action that Jesus would do. So again, as they pursued Jesus to catch him and trip him up in some way, we find that this is taking place right here. It said, and I'll read verse 6-1 again, and it came to pass on the second Sabbath, after the first, that he, Jesus, went through the cornfields and his disciples plucked the ears of corn, all right, and did eat. And to do that, they had to rub their corn hands together. The, 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 the laws back then allowed them to walk through any neighbor's or any stranger's field and get something to eat if they were hungry, okay? They weren't allowed to take a sickle and start chopping down and cutting and taking stuff away. No, no, everyone had a right to glean and get a little bit to eat if they were hungry. And this is what they were doing. But the Pharisees, who had a man-made laws that they had added to God's scripture and had, and, and, and had put them to the people for the people to obey, one of the Pharisees' man-made laws was that they couldn't, uh, they couldn't do just what they were doing. They couldn't eat, pick, pick from the field and pick corn and, and rub the corn husks together to get to the edible part of the corn. That was in the eyes of the Pharisees and the belief of the Pharisees. This was work and you can't do work on the Sabbath. <coughs> so they are now observing and I'm just going to read it. And I'll tell you after I read it. And a certain of the Pharisees said unto them, why do you eat that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day, on the Sabbath days? All right. You can't do the work of eating corn out of the field on a Sabbath day to feed your hunger? Well, first off, they're wrong. <laughs> you can't. They, they, this did not break God's laws. And here's where their difference came with the, between the Jesus and the Pharisees. The Pharisees' man-made laws that they held to, Jesus was constantly breaking them as they are doing in the lesson today. Okay, But Jesus never broke God's law. In fact, it was an opportunity to illuminate the truth of what God's law really said, since the Pharisees certainly were not teaching it correctly to the people. Okay? So, so the, the intent, see, we can have an, a, a, a wrong intent, an ungodly intent, just like these Pharisees, okay? have an ungodly intent, but our actions could be right on the outside. Oh, we can show up in church, but our heart might not be right. Okay, Our heart may be right. A heart should be right and, and, and submitted to God in all that we do, that we make heartfelt decisions to do what God has called us to do and commanded us to do. So these Pharisees are now picking at, at Jesus and his disciples, saying you're, you're, you're eating, as, eating food and doing the work of picking this food and you're breaking, quote unquote, God's laws, okay? And with that, Jesus answered them and said, and he gives them a, a, an, an illustration to show why what they're doing is okay. He says, have you not read so much as this, what David did when himself was a hungry, when David was hungry and they were with him, 
how he went into the house of God and did take and eat the shoe bread and gave also to them that were with him, which is not which it is not lawful to eat, but for the priests alone. All right. So what Jesus is saying here, I, the son of David and my disciples are in the field eating this corn on the Sabbath. You claim we're doing work and doing what is unlawful. First off, it's not unlawful, but I'm going to give you an example of a situation that was not lawful. David and his men came into the temple and they were hungry. They were hungry. And the priest, Ahimelech was his name. The priest prayed to God, turned to God for, for, for instruction, and he was allowed to give the shoe bread, okay, a bread that, that was used in the ceremonial temple worship and temple ceremonial rituals. This bread that was to only be eaten by the priests and no one else now was being given to David and his men okay, to eat because they were hungry. All right. Well, first I say to you, God has always commanded us to feed the hungry. Okay. When he was hungry, we fed them. When we were thirsty, we gave them drink. When, when we were in prison, you visited them. And the men, and they turned to God and said, well, when did we do this to you, Jesus? He said, when you did it to the least of me, to understand at a heartfelt level how important it is to meet the needs of people. God puts that above men, oh, everything. The greatest commandment says, love the Lord thy God thy, and thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, you're supposed to love God first and love human beings as well. And love means charity. Love means to give. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. To commit an act of love is to commit an act of giving. It is sacrificial and it is without a cost. It is charity. The Bible uses the word charity instead of love at times in scripture. Corinthians 13 is an excellent example, the love chapter. So there is nothing. So God's Sabbath, if you don't understand anything about the Sabbath, you should know that God did not give it a day of rest for the purpose of, of preventing you from helping those who are in need. Give you another example of that, the parable of the good Samaritan. Okay. Now, many times we're always taught that we're the good Samaritan, but that's not the case. Jesus is the good Samaritan as he tells this parable. You and I, we are the man who fell among thieves. So when we are hurt, wounded, all of our clothes have been ripped and taken and, and, and our precious items have been taken as that man who fell among thieves was, was done and wounded with multiple wounds across his body and left for dead. Visited by three people, okay? Two were religious leaders, a priest and a, and a Levite. I, I mean, I'm sorry, a Nazarite. A priest and a Nazarite who looked at him and went on about their way. But the good Samaritan saw him and, and, and helped him, poured, had loving kindness towards him, poured oil into his wounds uh, and, and placed him on his own beast of burden and taken him to a place of rest and, and said, well, if, if there's anything more owed, I paid it all, but if there's any more, <coughs> when I come again, I will take care of that as well. Well, saints, you should hear all of those works and hear the work of Jesus in that work of the Good Samaritan to look on someone who has been hurt and wounded with loving kindness. That's Jesus to pour oil and wine into his wounds, to place him onto his own beast of burden, to pay the innkeeper all that is cost. Oh, Jesus paid it all on the cross and Jesus paid it all for this place of rest. And it's all paid in full. But if there was anything more, Jesus is coming back again. There's a second coming. And Jesus said, I'll take care of it. Now, who, there may not be anything more for Jesus to take care of when he, pay for when he comes back. But if it was, Jesus would know, but he is coming back. All right. So saints, we should know that Jesus is the good Samaritan and you and I are that man who fell among thieves. So when you look at our lesson today and you see someone who has a void in their belly, that they're hungry, there is nothing to stop from, from being poured in to that void within the belly of these disciples that is nothing wrong with doing it. Unlike the two religious leaders who looked on the man who fell among thieves and went around him and away from him, 
Who knows what their rationale could have been? Maybe it was a Sabbath day, and they decided they weren't going to do it. Maybe the Nazarite thought the man was dead, and Nazarites don't go near dead bodies as the law commands. They all found a reason not to help the man who fell among thieves. But Jesus, the good Samaritan, said there is no reason on God's green earth that I'm not going to help someone in need. If they're hungry, if they're dying, I'm going to, I am able and willing to save any who desire. All right. So that is the greatest commandment over all commandments to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. Will you love your neighbor and give to your neighbor, sacrifice for your neighbor, make sure your neighbor's needs are met just as yours are when you find yourself in a circumstance and an opportunity to help. There's nothing greater than that. Oh, and these Pharisees were always trying to put some law above God's greatest laws. All right. And saints, I'll tell you, we, we can do the same thing in church. In churches, in every church, oh, we have the Bible. Many churches have the Bible sitting at the front of their sanctuary. All right. But then they make additional laws. We have church constitutions. We have church covenants. We have bylaws. Oh, we have a lot of man-made laws. And they have a purpose. Okay. Uh, quickly, oh, many, many church constitutions are there in case the church gets sued. You don't go into, into court and, and, and lay the Bible out and say, this is what we do. No, you, you do use your church constitution and, and show to the judge, this is what our policy and procedures are in our daily actions of the church. But you don't run the church off of the church constitution, the church covenant, and the church bylaws. You are led by scripture and the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit reveals the scripture to you in your daily applications. We don't want to be the self-righteous individuals who, 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 who would lean towards man-made laws like Pharisees over, the God, over God's laws. All right. Well, this is what the Pharisees do, and, and let's continue to read about them as they continue to do what they do. So, again, Jesus answering them, answering those Pharisees who thought it was unlawful. He said, have you not read so much as this when David, what David did when himself was hungry? And they that were with David, how he went into the house of God and did take the shoe bread and ate it. And he gave also to those that were with him. And it's not lawful to eat this shoe bread except for the priest. Okay? And he said unto them that the son of man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath as well. It's his word. He spoke it. He wrote it. He gave it to us. It is his word. He is all under him. He is the high priest who sits on the right hand of the father. All right. With the wounds in his hands, the high priest that we can go through so that we might have access to the heavenly father and not have to, to uh, stay outside of a veil inside the holy temple. He gives us access directly to the father. And then it says in verse six, and it came to pass also on another Sabbath. So now we're going to look at a different account. Okay. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered Jesus, entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. All right. Well, we have another Sabbath. This is a day of rest for, for all as scripture calls a day of rest and a time to worship. And what better thing to do than worship than for Jesus to go and teach in the synagogue? He said, enter the synagogue and talk. So basically, Jesus went to church. Jesus went to church and he decided to teach. That's a good thing. He wanted to share the word of God with those who have come into God's house to learn and to worship. So he is observing the Sabbath right here and there as the listeners and readers are and as Jesus himself is doing. Jesus, who committed no sin, is within the will of God already at the very start of this particular Sabbath day. Came to pass on another Sabbath day that he entered into the synagogue and taught, and there was a man whose right hand was withered. My goodness, here's a man with a wound, a man uh, who needs help, who needs a little oil and wine pulled into, poured into him. Well, let's watch and see what Jesus does, and all the Pharisees are going to keep a close eye on him. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him, as verse 7 says. 
whether he would heal on the Sabbath day. And they might find an accusation against him. Well, Jesus, our good Samaritan is all ready to heal this man who has a wound. Now, now his wound is one he has lived with for a long time. It's not an emergency. Okay, he is, he's not actually dying right now, but he's in need. And Jesus is about to show that I can help with every wound. Oh, the, good, the man who fell among thieves had multiple wounds, not just one. So there were many things Jesus could do on the Sabbath day to meet the needs of others, to be a savior for those who need a saving, to provide help for those who need help. Mm-hmm. Well, the Pharisees and scribes are waiting to accuse him, but Jesus, he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. All right, so here we have the man with the withered hand, He's encountered Jesus. Well, Jesus has encountered him. And Jesus asked him to stand up. All right, come on over here. All right. Then then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. And that means everybody in the room, not just the, not, not just the man with the withered hand. I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil? To save life or to destroy it? All right, so right before Jesus does the miracle and has his man and, and the Pharisees are sitting there waiting and watching to see how they can trap him, Jesus asked, he has a, a powerful teaching moment here simply by laying out the question. We all know we're supposed to rest on the Sabbath, rest from work, okay, and, and focus on God. And Jesus is doing that. He's teaching here on the Sabbath, but he's getting ready to help someone. So he asked them point blank, can I do good? And, and can I save life on the Sabbath? Or am I not supposed to do anything uh, and, 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 uh, and, and, and let evil have way or, or let things be destroyed? Okay, Tell me, crowd, which one is right? Well, saints, if we go back simply to the Good Samaritan, well, we know the very name means good. All right, Good Samaritan. For what he does, it is all right to do good work on the Sabbath. This is not, this does, in, this in no way breaks God's giving commandment of remembering the Sabbath. If you have an opportunity to, to love the Lord on this day of worship and at the same time help someone who is in need, it's all right to help them. There's nothing wrong with it. You can pour oil and wine into the wounds of every neighbor and friend that you may encounter and you are not hurting or breaking God's word. And everyone that heard it, they knew it was obvious. They knew the truth. You know, it's okay to do good. It's okay to save. Jesus is a savior. He doesn't take a day off from saving. Okay? He doesn't take off a day from doing good because he can't do anything but good. Okay? So Jesus has thrown the question out, and having thrown the question out, it, he then says in verse 10, and I'll read it, And looking around about upon them all, he said unto the man, stretch forth thy hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. All right. So after throwing the question out, Jesus then says, all right, watch me perform this miracle. Put your hand out. He does. And Jesus does the work. He does the good deed. He makes the man whole and restored in his hand, all right? And when he has done it, there is a response. (laughs) Here's the response. In our last verse of our lesson, it says, and they were filled with madness, all right? It says, and they were filled with madness. And, and, And we know who the they are. This is the Pharisees and the scribes. Jesus has just done a good thing. He has healed a man who was wounded, Everyone should be celebrating and, 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 and glad that someone has been healed and been made whole. But it has made the Pharisees and the scribes furious. They are angry because of what Jesus has done. And it says they communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. It's hard when these Pharisees don't know the Lord. 
Okay, uh, I, I'll, I'll give you another example. Jesus was always talking about the Pharisees and the scribes in Scripture, uh, and the the prodigal son. Uh, he had two sons. There were two sons in this story. Uh, the young son is the one who who um, who was lost and finds his way back home from a pig pen. In this pig pen, he he he, he reflects on all the loss that he is experiencing right now, covered in mud, surrounded by pigs, and his father's home, which was beautiful, where he had everything he needed. And he weighed in his mind where he'd rather be, and he wanted to be at home with the father, and he decided to return home. But saints, use your spiritual imagination, and imagine the, the prodigal son covered in mud with the pigs and looking at that scene from 40 feet away. The pig and the man would look identical. They look the same on the outside, but they're not the same. Imagine the son using your spiritual imagination. Imagine the prodigal son leaving the pig pen and witnessing to the pigs and said, pigs, why don't you come home to the father's house as well with me? It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Everything we need is at the father's house. Well, the pigs aren't going to see it that way because the pigs have never been to the father's home. The pigs are not from the father's home. They are not of the father's house. Their father was pigs just like them who came from this pig pen. They would look at the, at the son, the prodigal son, and say, why do you want me to leave all of this? We've got the mud, the coolest in the hot sun. We've got a rotten ears of corn and half of, uh, of a potato, uneaten, ready to be eaten. Everything we need is right here. And you keep insisting that we leave here and quote unquote go home. You must just want us to get out of this pig pen so you can double back and get it for yourself. Okay. And if they feel that that you that the prodigal son has done this to them, then they want to feel justified in doing something to the prodigal son. Scripture says, cast not your pearls before swine, lest you be trodden by them. All right. This is what happens. Jesus said of them. You don't know me because you are not of you are of this world and I am not of this world. All right. They the this last verse that we read of this madness and this desire and communing to hurt him is no different than Cain. Cain, because his brother's offering was accepted, a good deed was done. Cain became wroth and his countenance fell. That mean he was angry. There was a madness that came over him. And he, and he planned to take his brother's life. All right. Again, the conversation that Cain had with himself, where these Pharisee scribes had it amongst themselves, is the same when they are not of their father, of, when they are of their father, the devil, and not of Jesus. What Jesus does, the good things that Jesus does, does not resonate for the Pharisees and the scribes. Okay. They, they see it differently from the, the unsaved souls that Christ came to save, the ones that were unsaved but were ready to receive Christ. They were men who had fallen among thieves but were ready for healing and to be made whole. And Jesus can perform that miracle. But the response is different across, across many. There is a remnant that will receive Christ joyfully and cheerfully, but then there is another set and we don't know who is who God has simply called us to witness to all. So saints, let's share the word of God. If you've known it, if you have learned it, if you have followed Christ, you might have an opportunity to, to, to present Christ to someone else. So they might know him in the free pardon of their sins, share in your own way as you're capable as God has given to you because he truly is the son of God and his miracles can make us all whole. Well, saints, that's our lesson for today. Come on back next week as we continue to look at our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God.